darling. Backyard cheese platter, huh? Oh, well, this is tasty. Ooh, you got that good water. That's my after work treat. Oh, it's a product of South Africa. I know someday you want to go to South Africa. It's but on the list hard. I know. But right now, instead of Cape Town, we're going to have some South African wine. And we're going to cook, well, maybe not dinner right now. It's a little early. You just got off of work. But maybe an appetizer? Yeah. Um, what do we got? Should we bring this, like, our stove from inside out here? Probably. Or like a Coleman stove with some propane? We can just use the fire pit. It looks great. Yeah. Oh, we could use the fire. Speaking of fire pit, that wouldn't require any fuel. Right. Like canned fuel. Right. Maybe we use... What is that space age thing over here that I hear humming? Some sort of alien craft that landed on our outdoor dining room table? Look, here's the instructions. It blew away. Oh. It's the, what is it, Enki? Sent to us from Italy to try out. Now, Thanks, Italy. Yeah. The ultralight <laughs> backpackers. The Italy flag? Yes. Now, the ultralight backpackers, anytime I bring out something slightly heavy or big, freak out. Right now, I think even the regular backpackers might be freaking out a little bit. This is obviously for car camping. Yeah. I say obviously, but most of you may not even know what we're looking at right now. This is actually a stove. Oh good, look, for size comparison. <laughs> yes, that's how it looks compared to a bottle of wine. Now this is the biggest one they make as yeah. far as I know. They sent me this. This is definitely for car camping for like groups of like up to like, I don't know, I'd say like six of your friends. We can get a big old pan or pot on there and make some food. This one here is like two and a half kilos, which is around five pounds. Even the small one is still one kilo. So they are definitely not for like ultralight backpacking, but if you want a stove that is gonna burn natural fuel, and actually it doesn't burn stuff, we'll get into that. Yeah. It, but car camping, beach trips. Mm -hmm. And then the fuel, you just scavenge around and find what they call biomass, which is like sticks, pieces Sounds of weird. wood. Biomass. Biomass. Duff off of the ground. Duff? Duff. Duff. Duff is like that, you ever walk in the woods and it feels kind of springy? And it's just years and decades of stuff that falls off the trees and uh, plant matter and then it decomposes, kind of. And it's just, it's very flammable. It's actually dangerous. Like if you spill a alcohol stove, it could ignite it. But anyway, that stuff is really good. And you pack it in the chamber on this thing and well, we'll get into it. but. It's kind of a green alternative from what they say because it doesn't actually burn and release smoke in carbon dioxide. It does a process called pyrolysis. I'm assuming something to do with flame for pyro. It's when you thermally decompose something yeah. in the lack of oxygen. That's some heavy, that's some heavy shit for, for Thursday uh -huh. after work. Yeah. So a regular fire would be decomposing something thermally with oxygen, right? Because what feeds the fire? O2. Air and then of course a fuel source like biomass. In this case, you are actually heating something up without oxygen and then it, it still emits heat, but it slowly turns into something called biochar or char. It's like a high percentage carbon. It makes a good fertilizer and whatnot, so it's not bad for the environment. Um, it's not pure carbon. That would be like a high level, like an extreme version of pyrolysis, like an industrial level. They will do pyrolysis and it'll break down all the way to carbon. But in this case, it's a little bit lower level than that, but it's still good for the environment. And there should be no smoke that comes off of it because once we get it lit and going, it will get into that pyrolysis state and it'll just generate heat without smoke. And you learned all that from here, right? Uh, well, they give you some good info, but I went on uh, uh, extensive research on the internet as to what pyrolysis is. You mean is. you just didn't even know it? Uh, no, not right off the bat. You want a really typical example of pyrolysis? Charcoal for barbecue. Yeah. That is wood. Most people know that charcoal is wood. Traditional way to make charcoal, and it's still prevalent today, is you bury a bunch of wood under mud right. and dirt, and you light a portion on fire and then it heats up super hot, but because of the mud, it can't get oxygen and it pyrolysizes. I don't know if that's a word, but pyrolysis kicks in and it turns into charcoal. Is it just singular? Pyrolysi? I don't know. We gotta check that out. These are the questions we have. Yes. 
So anyway, enough of the science for now. We need Ew. to make some food and drink some wine. Um, what do you want? I know what you're gonna pick. <laughs> Edamame. <laughs> Edamame. Okay, that will require some boiling water, but that'll be a good test. Let's try it out then. Cheers. Don't eat my flowers. No. First things first. You need biomass. You like that word? No. First things first. Uh -huh. You need an Enki stove. Oh. <laughs> yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. It doesn't make sense. Let's back it up. That. First things first. You need your spaceship. That's true. So it's like a so big. We're gonna call it a spaceship from here on out. Here's how I'm gonna break it down real quick. It's a big piece of aluminum crafted into this shape here. Unfortunately, on the way from Italy, it seems to have gotten a little bit of a knock. Don't point that out. You're just, there's so these two. I don't think there's any way to not point that out, but it's not Enki's fault. The postman beat it up. Here, what if I do that? Does that look better? I don't think it affects the function. So there's that big body there. There's a fan on the bottom. Now, at first, even myself, I was thinking, oh, a fan, because what does that do for the fire? And it, like, I was thinking, like, it stokes the fire, right? Like, how you blow air on a fire with, like, a bellows? Yeah. But remember the no. definition of pyrolysis? That's a bellow. You don't know a bellow? <laughs> I do, but, like, right who here. has That's a... That's a bellow. But who has a bellow? Yeah. But anyway, you're proving a good point. Using That's... my bellow. Right. The fan is not for <laughs> blowing air to feed the fire. Right. Based on our previous definition of pyrolysis, it's thermal decomposition in the absence of air. So we're taking air away. So the fan actually sucks air out of this chamber here. So it pulls air out through the bottom. And then on the top, so there's holes down the bottom there. You can probably barely see them. It's very dark. Is there's a your flashlight? Oh yeah, there we go. So down at the bottom, there's a ring of holes draws air in that that robs the fuel of air to encourage pyrolysis up top there is another ring of holes and a channel in between presumably so what you get is air being sucked away from the fuel at the bottom and then fed up top and when we really get this thing cranking you're going to see this thing start blowing out jets of fuel almost like a gas stovetop but anyway that's that so right now we need a fuel source. Now, if I was in the woods or at a car campground, I would just walk around and pick up some twigs and whatnot. What is the dog doing? I don't know. He was over here. I don't know what's happening. Sally don't like it. He's freaked out. There's some sort of noise. I think there's like a gopher that lives behind our shed. But anyway, um, fuel source. Instead of sticks from the yard, because I have some, but they're kind of green, which means they haven't really cured or dried out yet. All wet. I got some firewood and a Tupperware here because I just uh, took some firewood left over from the cold season and hacked it up with my SOG tomahawk, which isn't really an axe but or a hatchet even. It's a, actually a weapon. But thank you, Mike. Uh, what, did he give me that for birthday or... Christmas. Christmas present? Yeah, I love that thing. And you know what? It gets the job done. It has like a digger bar or uh, like a digger side on there. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Um, but it got the job done, and I did some like shavings and some larger chunks. Now I found that just like starting a regular fire, and Sarah pointed this out to me. I got frustrated at first because I was like, "This isn't lighting," and she was like, "Well, would you really light a regular fire just by lighting big chunks of wood?" And I was like, "Okay, that's a good point." So you still want to take that into consideration, have some small kindlings. I have thrown little pieces of like paper towel in there because you're cooking anyway. But right now we're going to try to just throw it in there with maybe some of these smaller pieces. And a couple handfuls I found will last around 15 to 20 minutes. And that nowhere near fills the chamber capacity on this large version. Oh, I like this one though. Look, it's like a wood ring. What? It's a wood ring. Do I just put it in? Yeah, put a couple handfuls in there. So a little smoke at first, of course, because at first it is a regular fire. I'm just using traditional fire making at first. All right, so we will let that burn a little more until it covers with flame. And it's spreading out pretty good now, Sarah. I think maybe we turn on the fan. So the basic way to do that, it comes with this battery pack. It's basically just a 10,000 milliamp battery pack. All you have to do is plug it in and turn the fan on. and 
any USB power source will work. So if you have a favorite power source that you already carry, you can just use that instead. As you can see, I have this Aukey 30,000 milliamp guy right here that works just fine as well. But we're gonna use the stock Aukey one that came with it. So I'm just gonna plug it in. And it has a power button on it, press that. And now on here, I will press this and it comes on power level one, two, or three. So high, medium, or low. I'm gonna go to start it. What do you think? We'll start it with high? Yeah. Oh my goodness. Look at it. It's like a little tornado effect. Look at this. Yes. And it turns into a jet stream. Holy, look at it. It's just going. Uh-huh. So that's just a couple handfuls. It will settle down in a few minutes. Well, that's no from fun. From my experience. I want to do like a hibachi. Well, we can do that too. Um, so once it settles down, it'll go into more of a calmer state. But right now it's really cranking. And, uh... We'll turn the stove down after that. Now I find that low is actually just fine for actual cooking most of the time, but you do have, because of this system here, the ability to control the temperature and the intensity of your flame. Madamame here. Frozen, but it's here. Steamables! Well, well we're gonna... See, we can just microwave them. People will never know. Ah, good point. They come bearing gifts. I would imagine this has like a spot to tear it, but not manly enough. Yeah. Ooh. Survive. Here. Put it in a steamy thing. Is that the official name? I also should point out, now that we're here right now, two things. Like I said, you can use any USB power source that you want. It came with this one right here, 10,000 milliamps. I ran this today as a test for five and a half hours. It's been blinking four bars all day. It finally went to three bars after five and a half hours. So I would say this goes at least 22 hours. Now I should point out, I wasn't running fire in it. I just left it running all day with a stopwatch with the fan on medium. 22 hours on this is pretty cool considering that you're most likely using this for car camping or like a base camp type situation. So I would almost tell you this is super overkill, just bring a little lipstick charger, but if you're just car camping or base camping, not a big deal. So this is fine, but just keep in mind you can use it with anything. Another thing too, you'll have to recharge that. Now those of you who really want to go green and just use biomass that you find and the sun as your power source for the fan, a good example would be this All Powers USB solar charger panel that I reviewed, uh, I don't know, like a month ago at this point. So I'll spare you the details, but it has a battery here, about 8,000 milliamps, which based on that thing would be a crazy amount of power. And the solar panels that you could just lay on the table next to you, and it would actively charge the fan as you cook. You wouldn't need any non-renewable energy source at all. You could just use sticks and twigs off the ground and the sun to power the fan, and you're good to go. I have this giant chunk of wood that you probably should not put in there. Do you want? There's also that. I don't I don't know what that is. So you want to see what happens? My puppy keeps. I would say Enki tells you not to do this, but we're going to try it. It's like the size of a whole chamber. Should we not do that then? Yeah, we're going to try no? it. That is a giant piece of biomass. Will it actually go into pyrolysis? Or will it simply burn uncontrollably? Got the fan on low. Should we jack it up to get that thing lit? Sure. So I'll put it on high. We are getting some smoke as it tries to ignite. All right, smoke went away. I see some flames leaping. Uh, oh, I think there it's, they are. I think Damn. it's working pretty well. So you know what? For the giant group camping version here, again, this is the bigger, much bigger version compared to their other model. But it appears I shouldn't be afraid. Just put a big old hunk of biomass in there and uh, really crank things up. You can use the little pellets of wood that you would put in like a fireplace or a barbecue smoker. Um, wood pellets you can use as fuel. And when you do the math, it's way cheaper than using like canister fuel. And what do we need, timer on it? Yeah, we gotta set a timer. Timer's up. Now, I feel like the smaller version may have been better for us just because this giant guy, like, I keep underestimating. The fuel capacity is huge. I keep filling it up to like here. And I should just go all in and pack the whole thing. But for the two of us, just keep in mind, guys, uh, you probably do the smaller version and be just fine. That looks good and steamy, though. Yeah. Nice. Sweet. Nice. We did it. 
Yay. Appetizer served. Woohoo! Now, when you're done, you have the biochar. So, I will show you guys. We'll check in once it's done. I'm just going to let it keep running until it burns out, I guess. Mm -hmm. Jack it up. And we'll see if that whole log turns into biochar. But afterwards, you just, you know, pour a little water on it to make sure it's extinguished. And then it's apparently a good fertilizer. Not while it's in the pot. Because oh. there's a fan underneath there. Oh, you mean dump it out and then... <laughs> dump. That would have been bad. Dump. Yes. <laughs> dump the stove out. I was like, that's weird. And then pour water on it. <laughs> it should also be noted, uh, again, this is like a car camping or base camp type thing. But this whole unit gets very hot. Stay aware of that. And in my experience, it takes about 15 minutes to get down to an acceptable level where you could handle it and potentially in a pinch put it in a car or something. another day begins. I let this thing fully cool down and burn out that giant log we put in there. I wanted to see what the biochar looked like in the end and I figured that was a nice big hunk so it would give us a good idea. See what it shrunk down to maybe as I enjoy my coconut and butter coffee here. Uh, Alright let's get something to pour it into. <sighs> I think this will do. Now one thing I couldn't show you yesterday this is where it plugs into the bottom of the unit which I'll show you in a second here and of course that's the battery pack we've been looking at the whole time but on the bottom here there we go you can see it has the fan there mounted on some cork board probably to keep it from transferring too much heat to the fan and that's where you plug in your battery pack charging cable so let's dump it out and see what we got from that big guy not a whole lot left there but it looks like just those little fibers of what used to be wood. You can kind of see how it's still got that, like I said, fibery kind of consistency from the wood there. So they are saying that's different than when you burn a regular fire, that this stuff here is dense in nutrients, retains moisture well for soil also. So all around, it's a good kind of natural fertilizer. So I could just toss that in my garden without any worries. In fact, it'll actually be beneficial. It's also worth noting, kind of interesting, this is not leaving any soot on my hands, which is interesting. Usually if I would reach into like, you know, a fire pit afterwards, I'm gonna have some sooty hands, but that is interesting. There's no substance really coming off of it. It's just a dry, fibery kind of material. If I'm out here and I have this on the table, I might as well have some breakfast, I suppose. I guess crank it. So I would say for the big version that I'm using here, remember there is that smaller one. A nice big pan is probably the way to go because you can see this is a, Pretty small pan considering the size of the burner and those flames are actually wrapping around the edge. I'm fine with my hand on the handle right here, but when I was trying to crack that egg it was quite painful. So don't be afraid to use a big old pan with this thing, that's for sure. Just cooking some eggs outside with some scrap wood and uh, apparently creating fertilizer for my garden that I don't actually have as well. But maybe I'm going to have to get a garden now. Ah, <sighs> yeah. Now I would say it's probably a taboo to not only eat while talking but to eat in the middle of a gear testing video but sorry guys I'm hungry well actually I can probably get back to that in a moment because right now I think that pretty much shows you all the basics of the operation and specifications and whatnot of the Enki wild stove now is this stove for everybody of course not what piece of gear really is even despite the fact that you don't have to carry any fuel with you obviously an ultralight backpacker is not going to carry this even a regular backpacker for that matter although the smaller one if you're in a group might be worth looking into check it out it's a couple pounds but like i said you don't have to bring any fuel i think it would still make sense for a group of people though not just a fast and light solo hiker but for the most part i'd say that's not the demo this is intended for it's for more of a base camp situation so if you're the type of person out there that likes to do a lot of car camping or perhaps picnic style camping in an area that has a lot of biomass or in other words sticks twigs etc to gather up and throw in here for fuel 
and you're also looking for a green alternative to your current stove system, you may want to look into this because it does not emit those greenhouse gases. And also, you don't have to buy a bunch of fuel. So if you don't like buying fuel cans all the time or storing them places, then you don't have to worry about that with the system because obviously it just burns stuff that's laying around on the ground. And of course, what I just described there may or may not describe you. Who knows? Different strokes for different folks. There is a link, a direct link to Enkey's website in the video. They appear to just sell direct. Remember, they are based in Italy so they're not on Amazon right now. Of course, as usual, all the other products that I showed you today, there are Amazon links for that in the description. Those links are a nice way to support the channel if you enjoy these videos. And that pretty much covers everything, I do believe, of the Enki Wild Stove System. So, till next time, I'm Syntex77, and you have fun up there. <laughs>